Hello, um, back with a pair of Lin Toucan speakers this time. So uh, a little um, two-way design, five inch woofer and a uh, little tweeter. Um, a guy called uh, Peter um, has sent these to me or his friend um, Mono who's donated them uh, to Peter has sent them to me directly. So when I've um, finished with them, they'll go straight back to Pete. And uh, yeah, I think um, like a lot of speakers that we, we talk about, especially the older ones, they carry a bit of um, sentimental value. And <clears throat> um, Pete and Mono are, are really good, good friends. Um, so it's nice that he's donated these speakers to Pete. Um, They've sat for a long, long time, I think, not being used. And uh, yeah, it's time to bring them back to life because um, I've come across these before a long, long time ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I remember them being very good. And I've done the initial measurements. And whilst there's an issue with this one, um, they're, they're pretty good already. So um, I'll put the measurements in now so you can take a look. So um, yeah, I'll bring you in a bit closer and um, show you around these and what needs to be done. And um, yeah, we'll get them stripped down in this episode and uh, go from there. Right, so like I say, they're a little um, two-way monitor. So width-wise, um, 19 centimeters. Height. Uh, 30 just over, uh, 303 mil, and then depth, 19 again. So um, yeah, nice and compact um, speaker. So we've got a five inch um, woofer. I think this is probably some form of uh, plastic, polypropylene, that sort of thing. Um, you can probably see that the dust cap has been pushed in, um, probably by little fingers doing this sort of thing. <laughs> um, th that's not gonna affect that, that woofer sonically um, but I will probably look at replacing these I might be able to just reactivate the plastic with some heat and um, a lot of that will come out but we'll see um, the surrounds are really dirty um, it is dirt I'm pretty sure of that and that's made the suspension very stiff so um, when I do near field base measurements I could see that it's a bit um, recessed so yeah we'll, we'll give these a really good clean um, treat the rubber and hopefully get these free and moving again um, because otherwise both woofers measured really well there was no um, distortion or anything the issues um, at the moment as far as we know are in the tweeter so yeah moving on to the tweeter um, we have a scan speak tweeter I'm pretty sure that's what it is and the dome material I think is breaking down. This one wasn't too bad. Um, a bit of a dip around, I think it was 3K. These measure very similar to the um, Proac tablets that I recently had um, because they basically use the same tweeter. This is a little bit different, um, but it's, it's a very similar sound signature. So these will probably have extended um, or better bass. But uh, yeah, so Cabinet wise, um, I'm pretty sure they're going to be MDF. We'll take a look inside. Um, veneered front, so we do need to carefully flatten this back to get some of these scratches out. Um, edge finished MDF around here, so I don't want to disturb that too much. Um, and then the veneer on the side here, very scratched. I'm pretty sure this will probably come out. I'm going to have to be careful. Um, so we have a port on the back, a bit grubby, but that's not a problem. Very small port, so um, these will play reasonably low. Bi-wireable, um, bi-ampable. 
I never see the point in that in a little two way. Um, so yeah, um, and then we've got a little nick there which will feather out carefully, hopefully. A few scratches here, but um, yeah, not uh, not too bad. We're, we're starting with something pretty decent and they are, they're built like a tank. Um, they weigh a ton as well. So let's move that one out of the way. And right, let's have a look at the other one. So this is the one with the uh, tweeter issue. There's a big dent in it, and you could see in the re response we dip and peak and come down, and there's distortion there. So um, yeah, something's not not right with the tweeter. Um, again with the woofer, um, this one isn't too bad. You can just see the dirt that's in there. You only have to scratch it a bit. Um, again, same issue with the dust cap. So. I'm hoping a bit of heat might reset that, but again, we'll see. It's almost um, risky disturbing this, but getting this dust cap off to replace it um, when really this is doing nothing sonically. Obviously, it doesn't look particularly good, but yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, this is the tweeter that's got the dent in it, and that shows up in the measurements. Cabinet wise, Again, front isn't too bad, but we'll flatten that off. We've got a little chip out of the veneer there, but um, we'll probably feather that out. Uh, some scratches again on the side, a few on the back on the corner here. Got a nick at the top, I might fill that and then sand it. A few scratches at the back, so I'll carefully sand those out, being careful not to disturb our, our badge. Um, yeah, so there we go. So I, I think we'll take this one apart, have a look. Um, I'm expecting the crossover to be reasonably elaborate um, on these. I've quite a long time ago had a pair of um, Lin isobarics, um, which have the three drivers at the front and the two at the top. And the crossovers were pretty complex on there, a lot of correction going on. Um, and given how these measure, um, Unless these drivers are behaving impeccably, I would imagine there's some correction going on in there as well. So, yeah, it should be interesting to get inside. So we'll do that now and uh, see what they look like inside. Okay, let's have a look. So in order to get to the screws for the woofer, this rubber surround comes off. And then we've got some Allen head screws. So machine screws, so we've probably got inserts, which is good. Okay, there's our woofer. Yeah, she a big girl, so yeah, we've got a aluminium basket, magnet bucking magnet on the back um, so yeah quite a hefty little unit decent sized wire so very good indeed so what I'll do I'll desolder that yeah while I'm waiting for the soldering iron to warm up it's it's worth mentioning how thick this front baffle is um, I think that's probably getting on for 24 mil um, let's see if I can crudely measure it without getting the calipers out yeah maybe 26 with a veneer on the top so uh, yeah like I say built like a tank um, the side walls I think they're still MDF but it's uh, pre-veneered MDF um, you can't see it looks like ply on the inside but um, I can't see that it is same with the back as well so yes we shall find out later I'm sure so yeah there's our, our woofer um, we got a hollow pole piece there which in some respects might be quite handy with the dust caps because we can actually get in there and push on the back of the dust cap so we might be able to 
tidy that up a bit um, or at least it will aid taking it off if we have to so yeah there we go right let's take our tweeter out and then we got machine screws in here with a torx head on them this time Okay, and there is our tweeter. So these cables are pre pre wired. So what we do, we'll clip these off at the moment, and I shall tell you for why. There's our original tweeter, um, stamped with Lin on it, but uh, again, it, chances are it's made by, I think ScanSpeak made it. Um, I might be wrong, but Peter has purchased and sent me direct a pair of ScanSpeak um, tweeters. Apparently these are a direct replacement for this. I'm not sure. I'm always wary about, about that. That's considerably more heavy than this. Um, so this is the D2008-852-100. Um, this is a nominal 6 ohm. I'm hoping this is the same. Although I've got a feeling this is probably 8. Um, the connections for our lead wires are different. Whilst this will probably physically fit in this cutout, we'll do it upside down. It does. We are going to have to notch out the side for the connections to go in. Also, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use these inserts. So we'll need to seal them up and then this will go in with some nice new wood screws. So it is going to look a bit different. But that is probably okay. So let's just label these HF. Right, cabinet fill. So got a good amount of polyfill stuffed in there. Our woofer gasket off, we don't want to break that. So, yeah, one piece, two piece, big piece, and another piece at the back there. We've got a big lump of well, I can only imagine it's on the back panel to dampen it, and then our base reflex port comes through and we've got kind of a almost a, a filter over it um, so yeah probably just to slow the air movement down um, stop any port noise but uh, yeah and there's our crossover which is much more simple than I was expecting it to be so what I'll do I'll fish that out and we'll take a look right in order to get the crossover out you have to undo the brass nuts on the back Because undoing the nuts on the inside don't get the thing out <laughs> uh, which is a bit odd really so that's the reason why they are soldered right through there and I bet all of this is pretty magnetic no okay That's good. So we have these nuts and spring washers on the inside of the board. But they're really not doing a great deal because the posts are all soldered really nicely in the back. So yeah, that's uh, that's good. So 
Where do I put these back together? Okay, so this is our crossover, and um, not what I was expecting to uh, to see given the measurements. It's just a simple second order on the woofer, second order on the um, on the tweeter. So we've got on the woofer circuit through our positive into our inductor, out the inductor, out to our woofer. So we'll get the value of that, and then we have a cap down to ground. So yeah, simple second order. And on our tweeter, in through this cap, which is 5.1 microfarad, through a couple of resistors. So we've got a 10 ohm and a 4.7, 5 watt each. So we are um, using both of these in parallel to get a slightly lower value than that 4.7, but with um, more power handling. And then an air core inductor down to ground. So yeah, let's... Um, test these inductors, test these caps, and, and see what we've got. The uh, old hot glue has gone brittle. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this 8 microfarad cap. I reckon these will probably be absolutely fine. 7.937, so yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, and our inductor, we can check by going across the positive on the input and the positive on the output. And we have um 0.78 millihenry so yeah a reasonable value so what i'll do i'll write that on the board right i'm just going to put that cap in and desolder this one right so on our tweeter circuit make sure you can see that all right because i'm using a narrower angle so on our tweeter cap it's meant to be 5.1 and it is 5.076 so yeah that's um, absolutely fine I didn't think we'd have a, a problem with these um, as soon as I opened it up and saw it um, right so our inductor let's um right so we can get the value of our um, inductor on our tweeter circuit now we've taken the cap out by just going across the positive and negative to the tweeter itself so let's see what we get uh, 0.138 millihenry so yeah very small value what you'd expect to uh, to get so let's write that 0 0.1, call it 0 0.14, nearest damn it. Um, yeah, so really and truly in terms of the, the crossover, um, we could change this out for a, an air core version. Um, these resistors as well, uh, I think we'll change those out for something better. Um, but other than that, yeah, kind of leave it as is, really, unless we have to do any tweaking to integrate this. Um, like I say, apparently that's a direct swap. Um, the way this is used in the um, Proact tablet as well, um, and the way the good one of these measured, very similar to that. That's what it reminded me of as soon as I saw it. So I'm fairly sure... Um, other than physically fitting it we shouldn't have too much of an issue so yeah all good okay um, we'll leave it here for um, for this part and the next part we will get the cabinets done get the drivers tidied up and get them all back together test them up and um, yeah see how they're sounding cool